Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Rapport Recovery webinar series. This is our second um, installment of, uh, of, of our webinar um, program. And um, the, the title of today's um, webinar is Marketing Our Way Out of Crisis. And we're very um, lucky to have with us David Kelly, who is the CEO of the Natural Diamond Council, um, which um, well, it launched as the Natural Diamond Council um, yesterday, um, was formerly the Diamond Producers Association. And so welcome, David, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Larry. And uh, it's great to have you. And congratulations on the on the launch yesterday. Um, how, how did it go? How, how was the how how how's the last twenty four hours been? Yeah, I guess it, well, it's not it's not how we expected it when we first planned it. We all thought we'd be together in Las Vegas with a, with many of the partners from around the industry, and it would be gathering together, uh, having a drink, toasting the future of the Natural Diamond Council. So didn't quite work out quite as we planned it when we, we first started on this path. But uh, given the fact we're all working remotely, given the fact we're all using Zoom and webinars, uh, in some ways it, it's, it's been better actually, because we've been able to speak to more people all around the world. We've been able to uh, have more in-depth conversations around it. We've been able to, uh, um, there's a lot we've been able to do that we wouldn't have been able to do oddly if we were all together. So. Uh, yeah, no, so it went well, and, and we're very appreciative of, of the many kind words that have come from around the industry, around the world. Right. Well, I, I, I think that if, if anything, if we've learned anything from from this year, it is that you you, you know you can't make plans. <laughs> Man makes plans, and uh, and um, and sometimes you know there, you know, God, God has other has other ideas. Yeah, we, we should all get diplomas in managing in crisis uh, automatically, I think, with our next paychecks. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, um, my initial my initial reaction when um, firstly that when I when I um, I understood that the, the DPA was rebranding was that this is really exciting news that, um, you know, amid all the amid the crisis that we've been and navigating for the last two or three months, suddenly there was sort of a, a, a um, some some refreshing sort of news that um, might energize the the industry, and um, and then again I had that same feeling yesterday. You know, as I, I attended your your webinar presentation marking the launch, um, you know there was a I almost had like a sigh of relief. You know, watching the the promotional video that you put out, that it was. Um, Really, just uh, amid all the sort of negative news that we're dealing with, <clears throat> there really was a, a sense of hope and and and, um, and and a positive message that I, that I got out of the web out of the the rebrand. Yeah, well, thanks, Abby. Thanks. That's that is obviously the desired message. Um, if we're cautious about one thing, is that we don't want to. Uh, um, not recognize the challenges in the industry at the moment. So our role is to look at consumer communication, look at it medium to long term, really. Um, but at the same time, to, to recognize that, that we are coming out of the coronavirus crisis. Um, we want to be optimistic. Obviously, when we planned the launch yesterday, we didn't envisage the, the significant troubles that are happening here in the US um, around the cities. Uh, didn't envisage the challenge that is to many retailers here in the US that have just at the point where they were looking forward and, you know, with a little bit of a bit of hope at the end of the tunnel um, to be hit in the way they have been by by the writing that's here. So it does seem like we are in, you know, very challenging times and we will all remember 2020. Uh, we'll all remember where we were, where we lived, what our family stages were. And so, yeah, we are, we are living in a, in a very tough time. Right, absolutely. Um, yeah, but kind of coming out of that, um, uh, my background is that I, I joined from outside the industry. So I'm, I'm a, a rare thing in this industry and that's an outsider. And I, I looking at it from the outside in, I thought this is an amazing industry. What better? My, my passion is, is luxury. My passion is luxury marketing. What better than to have this wonderful opportunity to, to communicate, um, what for me is the most lux lux luxurious product in the world. Mm. Well, so, you, you, uh, you, you started in your position at the, at the, we can call it the NDC now, right? The, the Natural Diamond Council. 
um, you, you began in December. Yes. Um, and and your your background is that you you for many years you worked as uh, on uh, in marketing at uh, Ralph Ralph Lauren, and in the past two years at Watches of Switzerland. I understand. So so you are coming in as an as an outsider. Um, what was your impression coming into this uh, position, both of the of the diamond industry, and also of the of the role of the, what was then called the DPA. So uh, I didn't know much about the diamond industry, um, the, the inner workings of the diamond industry. Uh, I, um, the, the, obviously, in the process of, of looking at this role, I did a lot of work here, looking into the role of what was then the DPA, looking at the, the members, the support of the members, etc. Um, but my, my, my view then and, and remains now is that this is an incredible industry. The, um, the what diamonds stand for, what diamond jewelry stands for, what the innovation that goes on, the, the values that so many of our, of our um, people in our supply chain, our manufacturers, the diamond producers themselves, it's incredible. It, it really is. And, even, and coming from the fashion industry, the fashion industry has a lot to learn from, from what we do. Um, but once I actually got in here, I, 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 it was slightly strange because I felt I came into an industry that actually lacked confidence. Uh, and what from outside looks, looked very strong, very uh, important, but actually inside we, we, we lack the confidence that, that it, in my view, we should have. Um, what we stand for, the values that we have are, are incredibly strong. And we'll talk about it more, I'm sure, and about you know, the changes of coronavirus. But um, yeah, so no, I, I, I will always be the most optimistic person in our industry, and I, and I hope the industry will hold me to account if I'm not. But, uh, but I, do see a, I do see a positive future for us, even if that looks a little way out now, you know, with the challenges that we're facing. Well, we, we will hold you accountable, and, and I actually will get back to that point. But um, I, um, I, I want to first um, ask you, you know, you came into the, into the position, and so... Um, I, you know, my, my impression um, was that the industry needed needed this change. It needed to uh, to rebrand and, and position itself in in a somewhat different way. So, from from your point of view, what what prompted the change and the, the, the overhaul that the um, that the, the the Natural Diamond Council has has been a result of? Yeah. So I mean, um, so we're we're a luxury business. And, and luxury is not, I don't mean that so much based on price, but luxury in the sense that we are competing for discretionary expenditure. Um, and, and, that, and therefore we are competing with other luxury goods, handbags, accessories, we're competing with technology. Um, the you know, iPhones are now over $1,000 in the US. We're competing with travel, we're competing with experiences and, and clearly they're affected through the current crisis. But as an industry, we have to look outside from a consumer perspective as to say, who are we competing with? Uh, and, 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 and what are our values that make us special and relevant in the eyes of, of the consumer? So uh, it's one of the challenges of the industry that I found coming in is that we tend to talk about internal crises. Um, but actually, for me, the impact on the consumer, driving the consumer desirability is everything that we should be focused on. Because if if we drive that desirability and we drive that consumer demand, many of the challenges in, in our industry go away uh, as a matter of course. So, so that, that is, um, so, so yeah, that's, that's what I find to be really uh, the potential of this. It's, it's, that's easier said, of course. It, it's very easy to make a bold statement on, on confidence. Um, and now we are, you know, we're deep into the detail of, of how we do that. Mm. Well, one one of the one of the points that you made in your presentation yesterday was um, explain, um, which I think encompassed the the or helped me to understand the philosophy of the the new organisation, is um, how you came to the name um, the Natural Diamond Council, um, and and I thought it would be a worthwhile exercise explaining to our um, to our audience, you know. You know, there, there are three components to the name, Natural Diamond and Council, and, and I think you, you made some salient points um, yesterday, and uh, I was wondering if you could expand on those again today. So hopefully it doesn't take too much explanation or else we... <laughs> <laughs> no, 
<laughs> or else we missed it all together. But to your point, I mean, um, diamonds clearly uh, are going to be very important to consumers coming out of this crisis. This is the first time in a, in a generation that uh, something natural has had such an impact on human lives, both uh, from a health perspective, from an economic perspective, from a livelihood perspective. So we were there with two of the words fairly early on, and then it just came down to what's the collective noun we want to call ourselves. And, uh, and really the word council, we believe best describes who we are, what we do. Uh, we researched a number of different names for it. But the, um, you know, what we are is, is we want to be the voice. We want to do that with authority. Uh, we want to do that with considerable trust from the consumer. And so therefore, that's, that's the name that we came to. And, um, and I hope you like it. Um, yeah, well, it, I, I think the, what most resonated with me was um, your, you know, the use of the word council. You know, it, it actually it feels a bit more, uh, your point yesterday was, um, was that you want to be an authority um, and, uh, and, and that's where you're really positioning yourself um, in front of consumers to be an authority on, on all things diamond. And, and I think council, um, council does make it, uh, does encapsulate that, but it also, it's a bit more approachable than, um, than association, for example. Yes, association, and we did research again the word association. Association is... Uh, I'll use the word more associated with, uh, apologies, um, but that becomes more resonant with a collective of people, with uh, a lot of people coming together. Uh, feels more, it feels more democratic as association, but it doesn't have that same authority. And, and what's really critical from a consumer communication perspective is, is do they trust the voice that is speaking? Um, does, that, does that voice speak with the authority that it has? We are in the fortunate position that we are brand agnostic, we are retailer agnostic, we, are, we, are, we can speak on any subject within our industry. Um, and in order for the consumer to listen to us, it's really important that we do so with that authority. So mm -hmm. out of all the names that we, uh, not least if we had been in an association, we'd have been the NDA, which clearly has, is another an acronym. Um, but, um, but yeah, this was the one that we felt best, ref best reflected a consumer perception of uh, of who we are uh, and what we want to be. Okay, um, so, so how, how do you go about then building that or showing that authority and building that trust among among consumers? Really, uh, a, a big change in our strategy is we have been, since we were first set up uh, five years ago, we have been an advertiser. Um, and an advertiser builds campaigns, tells stories, um, particularly at certain times of the year. Um, there's been a significant change in the consumer over the, in, over the last decade, and particularly the millennial consumer that we are primarily targeting. Um, and that consumer is receiving messages from brands, from organizations, 365 days a year through platforms. And so what is really, really important for us is that we tell the many, many narratives, great narratives in our industry, every day of the year and to do that you have to be an authority and, and we looked at a number of other industry uh, authorities we looked at architectural digest in the design world um, we looked at Hedinki, who do a wonderful job in the, the swiss watch industry um, we looked at wine spectator uh, and in every case they are an authority they have the best contributors in, in their industry on their platforms uh, they use their platforms to give the industry a strong voice um, and above all else, they, they influence people when any of those platforms recommend, whether it's a watch, a wine, a design, that has a direct influence on consumers. And, and we, as the NDC, we take very seriously our role to influence, promote, um, and just build the desirability of natural diamonds and diamond jewelry. So all of these things, it, it's a long, complicated task to get here. Um, we have a wonderful team at the NDC and, and they have worked super hard to get um, to get this prepared and ready for yesterday. But we've done deep dives into best practice through many industries, through many platforms, and, and that's why we are we're very pleased and, and happy with where it's ended up and, and believe will become the, the the platform that will give so many people in our industry the voice they deserve. Mm 
Mm -hmm. So, so, um, so the big change really is that um, in addition to being an advertiser, you, you're emerging as a or positioning yourself as a publisher of content. That um, that, that when when members of the industry, when particularly within the midstream and you know the the trade, um, think about the uh, you know what 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 is referred to as generic marketing. Um, for, on behalf, for the for the diamond industry, we always think back to these grand campaigns of the diamond is forever or the three stone ring, um, and so so and, and there's a kind of a yearning for that, as if as if like a one liner or a, a special tagline will will bring all those consumers back, um, and so as you as you mentioned, it seems that. That today's consumer is different, and the way people advertise is, is very is very different as well. But um, will you be bringing those components of um, of like a, a strong advertising campaign around the holiday season, and uh, and also looking at different collections or or um, or a concept of a collection such as the three stone ring? Um, will you bringing those? those into your um into your operations and your campaign strategy so yes it's inevitable that that everyone in the industry refers the, to the impact that the de beers campaigns made um you know de beers were advertising as they did over over a great number of years and, and became legendary in the world of marketing and communication so yes over time i would love to be able to say that we will have the impact that de beers had um, De Beers would recognise themselves that the world has changed greatly since then. Um, the days of having TV campaigns all around the world and print magazine campaigns, uh, and that pretty much being the limit of it, is, uh, is, uh, has changed. Um, so yes, we want to have the impact uh, that we have there. But now the consumer, so we will have an advertising campaign. We will be uh, launching an advertising campaign, we hope, to the consumer in September. The only... Uh, the only concern we have at the moment is our ability to travel and shoot a campaign, but we think we have a plan to, to get around that. So we will also be an advertiser. We, we are just in discussions on exactly what the campaign will look like, who will feature in the campaign. So in the De Beers sense of, of what we all remember, we'll still have a big campaign. The, we are taking taglines, but generally campaigns don't have taglines now. It's major brands... It, 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 the world is different. People don't recall taglines in the same way. Um, but so we will have a big campaign. Uh, but as I said, we'll also be. But it's really important for us to be this platform that's also 365 days of the year. It's as well as the the idea of a campaign. There is so many. There's so much great narrative in this industry that everyone says to me, "We've got to tell this story. We've got to tell that story." But they haven't had the platform to do it with. So uh, whereas a, a, a lot of industries have to go and make up ideas, have to create content, we are gifted by wonderful narratives in our industry. We're, we are gifted with wonderful um, people to tell those narratives. So it's about having a platform to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, ha, ha, sorry, do you, want, do you want to finish your thought? I was going to finish off your, the third part of your question, which was about product and collection. Mm. Uh, we also launched yesterday our first trend report, which is uh, not specific to a single product. Uh, it is, uh, in that case, we were identifying five different trends that were across necklaces, across rings, uh, across engagement rings. Um, so we believe that it's much more about trends in our industry. Um, and, and, but obviously it's an unusual time that retailers aren't buying inventory. Uh, the, the supply chain is heavily disrupted at the moment, but we think one of our, our, our key missions going forward is aligning the industry behind trends, such that the, what's advertised, what is uh, written about in editorial on blogs, uh, is also what's represented in, in retailers all across the value chain. Okay, um, and, and I mean, who, who's your target audience? Um, you know, is is it everyone who buys diamonds, or or is there, is there a specific um, demographic that you're initially focused on? Yeah, I mean, the the beauty of digital is is it's much more psychographic than it is demographic now. So it's very easy to identify people that have started to show behaviours 
that look like they could be interested in diamonds and diamond jewelry. And as an example, people searching for weddings, engagement, it clearly triggers that you can target for, um, for engagement rings. So the digital world means you don't have to be so demographic focused as you were when, when buying traditional media. But in terms of our tone of voice, we do want to be younger. We believe that, the, um, that our industry um, hasn't been as effective in presenting in a younger tone of voice as much as other luxury goods um, that we're competing with. So um, it's why what you'll see from us is, is a slightly more relaxed tone of voice. It's a happier tone of voice. Um, it's more reflective of nature and the outdoors. It's less, it's warmer, it's less stiff. Um, so the, the, the target age group is much more about the tone of voice than it is about the, the media targeting. Mm. And, uh, and you feel that I think when, uh, you know, on, on the websites and uh, again on the initial messaging that, 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 I, that I picked up on, um, but, but in your, um, you know, when you, as a publisher, then uh, when you look at um, the message that, that is going to resonate with those younger consumers today, um, and, and you mentioned earlier that in, our, um, in, the, in the current situation that we find ourselves, that those messages are, um, are amplified. And so, what uh, are, are there certain sort of consumer trends that you that you're looking to hone in on, that um, that uh, will that that will um, be encapsulated on your um, in your in the content that you're putting out? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a number of trends um, that, to a certain extent, they were happen happening before coronavirus, but um, coronavirus really has been an accelerant of those trends. And, and all of those trends we think are perfectly in line with the values of, of our industry. And those are things like, I mentioned nature and naturality earlier on. Um, I think sustainability will be, become even more important. And I think the, um, the consumer will be looking for a much more honest conversation around sustainability. Um, just, doing, you know, just doing carbon buybacks isn't gonna be enough. It's, it's genuinely, what is your footprint what are you doing for communities? And again, our, our industry has done amazing work that, that hasn't been fully told yet. Um, we think the context of goods that have meaning that last uh, is gonna be really important. What generally happens when you come out of financial crisis is that people move away from goods that are purely material in favor of goods, products, services, experiences that have more meaning in life. And, and again, the Diamonds and particularly natural diamonds and jewellery uh, have have more of that than any other luxury good, and, and it's why, you know, when you started out by saying that you know we're 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 presenting an optimistic view on on the world after coronavirus, but that's genuine. That's that's not just because we're we're stringing together a story. We we honestly believe that all of the the trends that are being identified at this time are, are perfectly in tune with the values of our industry. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I, I would imagine that you, you, it's a, ch it's, uh, you're facing a challenge, you know, sort of launching as a, or relaunching as an organization and trying to put out a new message that it's a very sensitive time, um, both in, both because of the, the coronavirus um, pandemic and the economic implications of that. Um, and also because of um, the, the unfortunate events that that, that are, are, are unfolding at the moment in the in the United States, so so does that does that change your your thinking in how you would um, build a campaign? Um, you know, compared to uh, you know if it was a regular year that you launched in in in, uh, in Las Vegas and, um, and and rolled it out in a regular fourth quarter period. Yeah, I mean, strangely enough, Avi, it hasn't. And, and it's, that's unlike probably most other marketing organizations. And the reason why it hasn't is that because the values that are relevant now is what we were, were already our values. So it's, it's like, um, I mean, a good example is diversity. You know, what's really critical for our industry is diversity. What's critical to our audience is, is diversity. Um, it's a very current topic today, but it's, uh, it, it's really important that you have diversity in, in everything you do. And that's, that's in every sense. And, and we made a real point of making sure that we're speaking to different audiences, we're representing different audiences. 
So nothing that we uh, we are we're fortunate might not be the right word, but we we've been incredibly considered in how we've done this, mm -hmm. and um, and so we haven't had to do any about turns on either the narrative or the timing. And uh, and I say, and we still feel that it's that what we're what we're saying, what we're showing is is positive in the light of the industry. Um, that, that's very that's very interesting. That um, that. I, th I think at this time brands are very um, are being very careful in the message that they put out, um, and, and perhaps it's different for an for a for a, for an organisation that's um, that is uh, responsible for a category. Um, that uh, you, you know, do, do you actually differentiate in your in your strategy coming from a, a branded background as you do? Um, is there a difference in in building a campaign for a brand versus a um, a category as as you're now responsible for? No, I mean it, it's not. What's um, for me a brand in the loosest sense is something that has meaning and values to the consumer, and whether that be around a product, an industry, a a particular designer. So all of those things make up a brand. It's what people a brand is what people think of when they think of you as i said whether you're a category whether you're a, a designer a manufacturer a retailer so yeah we we give as much consideration to the values in our communication as as any brand does uh, in the market so we, we have given all of these things considerations um we if we get it wrong it affects the whole of our industry so in, in effect it's it's the opportunity we have is huge because we speak as an industry, but the the risk is also huge. So there is a, there is a very large amount of consideration goes into uh, how we show up in, in the eyes of the consumer. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, taking it a step forward as an, uh, as a kind of an umbrella brand, and um, perhaps you can put it that way. Um, how do, how do brands and, and jewelry companies, and, uh, and, and in fact, the trade as well, the, the midstream, how, how do they tap into, the, into, your, into your campaigns? I think it's worth also mentioning that we, we haven't mentioned that, that, that the, the Natural Diamond Council does have a tagline um, that's uh, only, only natural diamonds and um, that you unveiled yesterday as well. So, um, so there is a certain direction that you're already bringing the industry um, you know, directing the industry uh, uh, along. And so how do, how do brands, um, regular jewelry, retailers, and the trade tap into the um, activities that you're um, presenting? So uh, I'll come back to retailers last, if that's okay. Um, for, the, for the rest of the industry, it's, it's really about um, tapping into the ability to tell the stories. Uh, I was in uh, one of my, in fact, my, I think it was my first week with the organization. I was in Mumbai and I was really, uh, I was really amazed by the, the work that's done there, the craftsmanship, but as much the values uh, that, that many, so many of the manufacturers hold. And, and again, uh, I think our member companies have done a, a good job in talking about sustainability. But I think there's also a lot more within the, 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 the supply chain that we can talk about. So we will we'll be the platform for that. We'll work with partners, uh, particularly in India, uh, Antwerp, you know, or Israel, all around the world to say, okay, how, what are the values that we think the consumer will really appreciate and how do we give that, that voice um, on our platforms? For retailers, we, are, um, we have a, a great team that focuses on, on retailers. Uh, in really helping, I mean, it, it's the, historically retailers have been very good at bricks and mortar. Uh, training, education uh, is so critical in, in how we, uh, across the industry, speak to consumers. A big opportunity for us is actually websites and, and retailer websites, particularly where we know that consumers are spending weeks, if not months, researching purchases. They're researching on websites. They're researching all across the. Um, um, uh, the internet, the social media, and what where we can help is really upgrading the the presentation, upgrading the messaging, in all of these platforms where consumers research. So, uh, we'll be continuing with the education. We'll be continuing with the marketing material materials. We'll be continuing with 
um, bricks and mortar in the way that we always have done and we'll be strengthening those programs. Um, but also stepping up on the digital side and really looking to support retailers with images, with copy, with content that we think will enhance the, the digital experience for consumers. Mm -hmm. so, so in a way you're, you're, you're working as a, as a consultant to, um, to jewellery retailers um, on their digital platforms. Yeah, I prefer to use the word partner, maybe, but uh, you know, <laughs> you're the marketing guy. I'm the journalist. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. no, but 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 this this is about but I, and I only to say that because this is a partnership throughout the industry, whether it be with retailers, supply chains, editors, contributors. We see ourselves as being the hub for all of that from a consumer perspective, and so. so it, it genuinely is a partnership. I, I don't want to have, I don't want to consult with retailers on, I don't want to, I, I couldn't consult with you them. You don't want to tell them what to do. Because they, they know their own business much better than I do. Right. But what I do want to say is that, that where we can help support partner and bring something additional, then we are, that's what we're here to help with. So, uh, so yeah. Right. Well, I, I appreciate the differentiation because, because my next question was, um, you know, if you're if you're consulting <laughs> to to retailers, um, then you know, do we is the idea to streamline everyone's messaging on their indiv uh, individual websites to um, to have one strong message that that becomes like a generic messaging that um, that everyone's fitting into. Yeah, and I think um, there has to, our industry, our retail industry particularly, is more fragmented than most, as you know. Um, and there are times when retailers rightly are competing with each other. And so I, I would fully understand when re if retailers say, look, we don't want exactly the same imagery, the same content, the same copy. So I dare say it will need adapting. Um, different cultures around the world speak differently and, and have a different angle on it. So, so I. I th I, it would be great if we could get consistent messaging, even if the um, even if the execution of that varies by retailer. Mm -hmm. While well, ma maintaining their individual um, or their individuality, really, and 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 I just, so, so you're working with, and that's across the board. You'll be working with um, with the major retailers as well as the independents. Um, is it is it that they they would need to approach you to? Um, to uh, to partner up with you, or are you reaching yeah, so out to retailers? Yeah, so major retailers. I mean, inevitably, we're starting. Uh, me personally, starting with the retailers with the larger scale, um, but we we can do it across all. We uh, we already have uh, amongst everything else we launched yesterday was our industry website, which is naturaldiamonds.com forward slash council, and on that. Um, and on that is the is where it's for the industry and for retailers. We have all the e-learning. We have the uh, and we have the marketing materials. So um, if it's not there yet in terms of content, that's what we'll be building up over the next few months with campaigns, etc. But everything will be available to retailers through the the uh, our industry portal um, where we'll have all the marketing materials. Okay, great. Um, David, uh, with, with your permission, I do want to. Um just pause for a minute. I, 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 did, I, I didn't mention earlier that um, the, that we are um, going to be taking questions from the from the audience. So if anyone has any questions, um, please please feel free to to write them down in the um, in the Q and A section of the of the um, of the Zoom, Zoom app, um, and uh, and we will be spending some time on, on those questions. Um, so, um, so you know what? I, I, with permission, David, I'm, I'm going to take a few um, that we have at the moment. Um, the first is: um, Is there a membership available within the NDC? Uh, there isn't at the moment. Uh, our members, um, our members are the diamond, uh, the diamond mining companies. That's that's how it was set up. Um, and so at the moment, not, but I think partnerships is something that we, you know, we do have. For example, we have a very strong partnership with the GJEPC in India. 
Um, they are wonderful partners to us. We, we share a lot of our strategy with them. We, we engage with them on, on everything that we're doing. So I think, uh, so technically uh, membership isn't open to all, but practically partnership is, and, and whatever shape or form that takes. Uh, I hope that, you know, envisage, envisaging great success, you know, I, I would love to, you know, to explore how we open it up and, and, and have different types of memberships. Because for me, this is an industry initiative. We are here to, um, to represent the industry. If we're successful, then everybody in our industry will be successful. So I would love to explore in the future um, ways that we can open ourselves up to, to partnerships with people throughout the, uh, throughout the supply chain and retail. Okay. Um, okay, so, so here, here's an inevitable question for you. Um, I think you can probably guess what it's, what it, where, where it's going, but um, with the council's emphasis on natural diamonds, what advice do you have as the industry continues to see the threat of synthetics? Um, surely a threat that cannot be ignored, or can the two industries coexist? Yep. So absolutely the two industries can coexist. Um, I've made a very, a very clear statement from myself um, with the support of my members that the opportunity open to us as natural diamonds is far greater than any threat or concerns around synthetics or lab grown. Um, the, uh, one of our industry challenges is that we tend to focus on threats rather than opportunities. And for me, uh, I, 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 for me, when I look at the numbers, this industry should be twice the size that it is. If, if you look at the growth of the luxury industry oh, since De Beers stopped advertising, it has been three, it, it has grown three and a half times. Um, our industry has grown about 50%. So there is undoubtedly opportunity for us to double the size of our business and still be underperforming versus the luxury industry. So my, so what I'm really focused on is the opportunity and the opportunity is to compete in the luxury market against footwear, accessories, travel, experiences, technology, anything that is discretionary expenditure. Um, and that is why I've, I've intentionally uh, steered away from any conversations regarding synthetics and lab growns, just because I, I feel that it's a distraction from, from the magic that we've got and what we're able to create. So I, I, hope, that, I hope that people understand that and support that. Um, and but I so to that extent I yes I, the industries can coexist. I don't know what they'll look. I don't know what lab grown and synthetics will look like in four or five years time. Um, but but for me I'm focused on the massive opportunity for our industry, not on not on the you know much smaller threats. Um, right. So so I mean the 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 idea is to be um, confident in your own product rather than be reactionary to um, to any outside influences that might um, that might dominate the, the 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 insular conversation that we have because I, I, you know the point that you made earlier about the industry lacking a bit of confidence we have been um, somewhat obsessed with um, you know with the growth, with threat of synthetics um, that's dominated our news pages over the last few years. Um, and, and various other threats that um, that we we tend to react to rather than um, you know amplifying our, our own virtues. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if if we if we focus on the opportunities, the threats will feel very very small. Mm -hmm. um, and inevitably, it, it's an interesting parallel with the Swiss watch industry actually, where the Swiss watch industry for a time became very obsessed with wearable tech. And wearable tech is clearly huge, but the moment that Swiss watches got back to recognizing the values, what they bring to the world, they got back on track. Mm. And uh, so it, it's, success is as much a, um, uh, a, an output from your own focus on the opportunities and the confidence with which you approach those, much more so than it is about threats. Mm -hmm. So why and then maybe I have the advantage of coming in from the outside to be able to see that maybe I'm naive maybe six months in I'm still not uh, I'm still not you know as aware as I should be on things in which case I apologize but everybody else outside the industry thinks our industry is amazing uh, uh, we should be confident in what we've got 
and uh, and it's our it's our mission to to bring that confidence to the industry and and show and reflect that to the the consumer. Mm-hmm. Well, m- maybe our um, we can hold hold you accountable according to the level of confidence that you maintain in the in in the industry and in the in the product. Yeah, Avi, I I completely, we take, honestly, we take very, very seriously our role. We realize that there are millions of people in this industry whose livelihoods and communities depend on on the work that that we do. So um, although we enjoy what we do, we we try to create this very engaging vision. We we take very seriously the urgency and the importance to so many livelihoods in what we do. So you can hold me account to it. Uh, I've said right from the start, I, I come in, I, you know, we're an industry body that wants to be held to account. Uh, we want you to support us and, and believe in us, and, but, but that comes with accountability. And, uh, and again, that's, that's part of our confidence in what we do. So, so how, how do we measure your success? Um, you know, three, five, ten years down the line, um, you know, when, when you ask um, someone within, within the trade, again, the um, the feeling is, you know, the tendency is to look at diamond prices. And, um, you know, if only we had um, a, a strong campaign that would stimulate demand, it would lift um, prices, and that's a, that's a way to measure the success of that of that campaign. And um, how do you how would you measure your success in terms of the goals that you have um, a few years down the line? So for. So for um... A little bit of what you said there, Avi. So success for us is desirability of diamonds. Um, and the reason why it's specific to desirability is that this year, for example, we could have built the desirability of diamonds, but we couldn't have impacted on sales or pricing. So we are not focused on directly on sales or pricing, but sales and pricing inevitably are an outcome from desirability uh, or a part of an outcome from desirability. So we are focused on desirability, but diamonds are desirable but what uh, but our desirability measure is if she's got an amount of money or he's got an amount of money whether it be a thousand dollars three thousand dollars are we more desirable than our competitive set which is the other luxury goods travel experience technology again because what's again because our industry has tended to be uh, more inward focused we look at research and say look we're desirable and we are highly desirable, but what really matters and what impacts on our industry is are we more desirable than other competitors that we're competing with for that disposable expenditure? Mm. Okay, so, so, so you would be looking to increase the, your, the, the industry's share of that, um, uh, that discretionary spend um, among consumers. Yeah, so building the desire, so our desirability goes up, our, our share of that discretionary spend goes up. That's that's what's important to me, and then, and, and that's what we sh- we should be doing. It, it's what De Beers built, you know, all through all those years. It, they, the desirability was so high in diamonds. That's what created this industry, right. and it's what um, the void that hasn't been filled is what we slip back on, and and we have to see our industry in the context of competitors if we're going to be successful. Mm-hmm. Um, well, well, this is one of the questions that, that, that have come up. Um, you know, do we achieve that focusing on a certain price range? Um, the, 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 the viewer asked, what, what, what do you think of which price range we should be focusing on um, in our pro- product development? Um, so are we, are we looking at the, at the very high end? Um, is it affordable jewelry that, um, that, we're, uh, that we're looking at? Um, uh, you know, so, so is there, um, along with the, the demographic of being a younger consumer that we, we that, that is our tone, does price come into that conversation? It, it does. I mean, definitions of affordability are different by market, but I mean, we know, we know that the Cartier's, Bulgari's, Van Cleef's of the world have done an amazing job, which just proves that at the high luxury end that diamonds and diamond jewelry is still highly desirable. Um, what our industry is, is challenged with is a lack of strong brands in the mid-tier. And by mid-tier, I'm talking engagement ring in the US, probably half to a carat, kind of two and a half thousand to a thousand, sorry, two and a half thousand to five thousand um, dollars. Diamond jewelry, kind of seven to eight hundred dollars and above. So 
So we are looking at what we, I know with different definitions of mid-tier, but in terms of the consumer, uh, the mid-tier, because we believe that's the, that's the audience that has not been spoken to with a branded voice, um, that needs the most support and help, that has the most potential, um, has the most potential to grow our industry and support our industry. So that's, that's our primary um, audience. But of course, we do believe that the audience and, and how we're presenting ourselves will have a, will have a broader impact than that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, is, is that, um, you know, coming from the, coming from the Swiss, Swiss watch um, uh, industry, um, the, 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 that industry is, is only brands. Um, even, the, even the most affordable watch um, is branded. Um, the, and, and to your point, that the, the, the mid-tier to lower tier of, of the diamond industry has more of a generic component. So do you, do you see that, um, or is it your, it's your goal then to expand the development of brands within the, within the more affordable diamond um, uh, category? Yes, I mean, it, and it's not just in, I mean, it's in all industries. It's not really even just in Swiss watches. Fashion and luxury fashion is is particularly is branded. Uh, pretty much everything in our price positioning is is nibble branded, and and without that, and retailers have a very important to play as well, and, and that's great. But without brands, there's they, it lacks that strong global voice and authority that all of these other industries have. So, um, it's it's a challenge because because the fragmentation of our industry, um, none of the the mid tier. Uh, let's call them brands, but have the same scale that the Swiss watch brands would have. So how do you get scale? We think, we think there are a lot of great designers out there that are producing great jewellery. There's a lot of innovation out there, but it doesn't have the platform to be able to speak to a broad enough audience. And that's, that's one of the many roles that we hope our new platforms will be able to do in the hope that consumers get inspired by by the great innovation, we are, it's, it's very difficult for, for new young designers, new brands to get the exposure that their, that their product deserves. And, mm -hmm. and I do hope there will be, there'll be more work through the industry on, on building um, recognizable brands that have a point of view um, because the consumer is, is really waiting for it. Mm. it. It's very interesting to hear you talk, talk about, about that. Um, given your role, and, and, and I'm sure you, you, um, you're not a fan of the term generic marketing, um, but, that, but that, that is um, the, you know, that's the perception of the, of the role of the, of the NDC is to, is to create these, uh, this category marketing. Um, but but um, if we think out of the box a little um, and, and try and understand that, that, that category marketing can strengthen um, a brand, the, the br branding within the, within the industry, I think that's a very powerful, that would be a very powerful measure of success for, for you. I think one of the best articles I read on it was in your own magazine, Avi, when you did the, gr the great comparison with avocados. And if, uh, if, it, if, 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 and that's a good comparison. Of, of course, avocado is completely different uh, industry to ours, but but category marketing can do that. As I said earlier on, category marketing is about, is like being a brand, it's about representing the values that your industry stands for in a way that engages and, and creates desirability. And that's a lot of marketing speak, I know, it sounds very strategic and considered, but it's, it, it's simply that's, that's what it is. And, and that's, what our, that's what we see as our role in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, great, I think a lot of people will be um, will find will, will be happy to hear that and, and excited to hear that. Um, let's see um, if we have s some other questions. Um, a, a lot of people are asking about the branding aspect of it. Um, uh, the, the, this um, the, this viewer asks um, if uh, if. Um, helping manufacturers and retailers create more diamond brands would help the industry and, and, and will the NDC provide expertise to do this? Um, I, th I think you've answered that question. Um, and again, so, um, I, 
Yeah, it's, it's, to, add, to add to that question, you know, I, we, we, we won't be a consultant for people, but, you know, we are uh, we love partnerships, love innovation, love new stories. So uh, yeah, we, we hope we can give we hope we can give greater exposure to to all that is good in our industry. OK. And um, how do you see the market for special colored stones, pinks, reds, yellows, blues in this new scenario, since these stones were well, well valued before the crisis and have also been affected by, um, by, by, the, by the economic downturn. Um, but uh, do, do you have a special focus or a separate focus on, on, on um, specific categories of, of diamonds um, and particularly in the colored stone market? No, uh, not specific. I, I think we will we'll cover all innovation, um, all uniqueness. Uh, our role is people have a perception of diamonds our, our role is to expand that perception and um, you know and talk to values so we don't have a specific um, objective or a mission around colored stones but it will certainly play part of our uh, of our vocabulary mm -hmm. among you've divided your your publishing work into six sort of um, key or core categories and one of them is epic diamonds um, I'm sure the the uh, the you know those special stones that that are that are sold at record prices um, in the auction circuits and uh, will be among those epic diamonds that are featured on the, uh, on on that um, platform. Yeah, and, and epic diamonds gives us the opportunity. Um, content in that in that area gives us the opportunity to to demonstrate the relevance of, of diamonds through many generations, many cultures, etc. Um, it also, you know, enables the consumer to, to show how it's, for, sorry, for the consumer to see how it stayed relevant, to see how the value has been retained in it. So Epic Diamonds is very much about the current and looking back the way on, on the great diamonds. And then we have a second content pillar called Style and Innovation, which is looking forward, which is looking at all the amazing things that are, that are coming, that are, um, that are being created by our industry. So um, from a timeline point of view, we have we are we have both the look back and the look forward mm -hmm. and then there's also the um the educational uh, component um of uh, of your coverage um yeah. and also seeing what's happening in pop culture at the moment on the red carpets on um uh, among celebrity um you know among celebrities etc yeah yeah, so I mean, there, there are all these different influences. So, so yes, red carpet celebrities are, are, are remain a big influence on mm. consumer, consumer trends. Uh, the trend report being announced this week, there, a lot of that was looking at what celebrities are wearing and how they're wearing it. So celebrity make, is a major part of it. Mm -hmm. Educations that consumers brought into our world, wanting to shop, can find, um, can find the details of, of what to look for in a diamond and how to buy a diamond with confidence. Um, so yes, we've we've tried to cover all of the the different narratives w uh, within our industry on on the website. Would you be then, um, you know, flipping it around, not 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 being an observer of trends, but also in influencing trends, perhaps, um, perhaps you know, uh, cam uh, sponsoring a uh, a campaign on the red carpet, dressing a celebrity. Um, you know when things do come get back to normal when we get back to a, a regular routine would the would the NDC be involved in that sort of um, um, work I think dressing people specifically is more in the domain of single brands but um, if if I have one minute I, I can explain a bit about the fashion world because the, the one of the major successes of the fashion world is its ability to create trends um, those trends historically originated with runway shows from designers uh, and what happened from those runway shows is that editors and journalists, bloggers would identify the trends that happened across the runway shows. But as well as that, retailers across the value chain would look at them and interpret those trends for their own audience. Such that when it came to the, right, when it came to the season, uh, consumers were able to read about the trends, but more importantly, they were able to go into the stores and buy the trends. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it be at, at fast fashion, whether it be at luxury, and therefore, the consumer is constantly changing their wardrobe out of desire rather than out of need. Now, our industry hasn't tapped into that, that opportunity yet. We haven't yet got ourselves aligned such that 
We are identifying trends. We're working with manufacturers on the trends, working with retailers on the trends. We're working with editors and publishers on the trends. So when a trend happens in our industry, it is much slower uh, and less dynamic than it should be. The peak is much lower than it should be because trends don't wait for time. But because it kind of filters through our industry rather than is driven, we are missing a huge opportunity in that. So what we're looking to do, and we, we launched our first trend report yesterday, is work with the industry to, um, to create trend reports that connect all of the supply chain and all of the consumer communication together in the belief that we can drive demand by desire rather than need. And uh, clearly we launched it in very difficult times. Um, we know that the supply chain is difficult. We know that retailers have inventory. So we didn't, it didn't quite work out as maybe we wanted it to, that everyone was able to connect and buy accordingly. But going forward, we will be producing these trend reports and, uh, and believe that with the input of the industry and support of the industry, then we can have a, a collectively a major impact on, on building ourselves as a fashion and, and, and really building our business. Um. Great. I, 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 it has been unfortunate because I think that and, and that, that that trend report would be perhaps the the most useful tool for 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 retailers at this at this time of year where they start to think about the fourth quarter and uh, and what um, what inventory is appropriate for consumers as they as they start to think about the the holiday season. Um, I, I think let, let's take um, let's take one more question from the from the floor, and then um, and then maybe we'll we'll, we'll um, wrap up for for, for today. Um, uh, the, this um, we have a question here that um, uh, young consumers are very much into social issues. How is the NDC planning to communicate diamond origins and impact in communities? And how can my young company? Um, partner with the NDC to better bring the stories to my audience. So one of the content pillars that we didn't mention earlier on that's on the website is what's called Inside the World of Natural Diamonds. Um, and that really celebrates the, the many human stories that, um, that benefit from our industry. Um, talks about sustainability really as it affects communities all around the world. We'd love to have more stories from, from throughout, our, throughout our industry on there. We also, have, um, we also have pages on there on sustainability, our sustainability goals that's on there. So we've, we've created this, uh, what we believe is a very strong hub for all of the content. And now it's about, and now we have a phasing is how we push all that content out through social media platforms. Um, we have, you know, each day we'll be pushing different content and we'll be pushing content from each of these pillars. So, I, sorry, I'm not sure who asked the question, but I'm, I'm happy, please reach out to me, happy to answer directly. But the content that we have on the website is, is, is there. We're, we're happy to, uh, to talk about how we share that with people because it's, it, we're an industry. We're an industry body and, and wherever, wherever we can give the message, we're happy to give the message. Um, great. Well, um, David, just in closing, maybe, maybe if you can give us a a message to the industry and, and, and perhaps put it in the context of the, the market environment that we're, that we're experiencing at the moment. Um, you know, how do, how do companies um, approach their marketing um, in this, uh, in, in this um, economic environment? Um, and from a personal point of view, what, what, is your, um, what is your message to the industry as we emerge from this period? So we, so I think, uh, to your answers, um, so we as a product and an industry, we represent connections and meaning between people. Uh, and we should be confident in that. We should be, um, people will be looking for this as they come out of this crisis, that we're looking for ways of expressing um, desire of love in relationships, friendships, etc. And, and we, re we represent that. We, we have to present it in a tone that is respectful of people's individual economic issues. Um, but, and I don't have a crystal ball to know how quickly and how soon we'll come out of these, the crises that we, we currently have. Um, but we will do at some point. And, uh, and, and I, I as, as I hope it's come across over the last hour, I, I believe passionately in this industry. I'm new to it. 
Uh, I felt very welcomed in it. Uh, I think the skills and expertise that we have is incredible. The values that we hold are incredible. And now it's about the self-belief, the self-belief that, that the consumer loves what we do. It loves the product that we have. Um, we've got to be focused on the opportunities and uh, focusing on the opportunities uh, is going to be what's, what's our focus. But I, I hope that we can, we can have the support of the industry and, and have your contributions as well. Well, uh, I mean, I think everyone has your back. Um, it's in everyone's interest to um, to share in your success and 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 at least um, you know support the uh, the direction that um, that you've taken. So um, I, I wish you luck, and uh, it's it's uh, from my point of view, it's very exciting. And and um, despite the, the 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 situation, it's um, it's still something to to really feel optimistic about. Good. Um, I, I think uh, if, if anyone missed it, the, the, the Natural Diamond Council's website is naturaldiamonds.com, right? That, um, and, uh, and within that, there's a trade um, section, and I encourage everyone to, um, to, uh, to check it out and play around on, on the site. So um, thank you very much for joining us, um, David. It was a pleasure to, to meet you, and I look forward to um, further interactions and meeting you in person. Um, Please God soon. That's great, Abby. Look, thank you very much for your time, Abby. We really appreciate your support of everything we're doing. And to everybody else, that's, thank you for spending the last hour with us, for, for hearing me through. And, and, uh, and I look forward to meeting everyone when, when the time allows. Right, and, uh, and this uh, webinar will be available on, um, on diamonds.net, both as a video broadcast and also as part of our podcast um, series so and um, thanks very much to everyone else for joining us and uh, god bless stay safe everyone thank you I'm sorry